All right, here we go. College football initial S&P Plus projections. Now, I don't think we're going to do this for like ESPN's FPI and all that kind of stuff. But like the S&P Plus, pretty good against the spread. It is a realistic number that it, that projects for the future, like how good these teams are actually going to be. Like it, it accounts for everything as far as successful plays, where their defense and offense rank, like okay. everything all into one. So, uh, as always, show is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six incredible, wonderful sports books. We love them all. Go check out more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. What goes into the SNP Plus? This is Bill Conley from SB Nation's uh, projection system. It's his analytical system. It is, I mean, it's been really good. Really good. Uh, there are three things that go into the initial one, right? The weighted four year recruiting rankings, returning offensive and defensive production, and then recent history, which is five years ago up until the year before last. So it doesn't take your like your last season. So like Kentucky going 10 and three last year, that's that right. was kind of the outlier. That's right. It's not going to take as much from that because obviously part of that's brought into returning production, whatever, but it weighs more in on, you know, your, your overall history over the last five years. So, would you prefer I start from 30 back to 1? I mean, they, they, there's a little shocking stuff at the top. Um, I mean, there's some shocking stuff. How about this? I, I'll give you uh, interesting teams that are outside the top 30. Cool. I've only got three of those. Number 107 was Kansas. They're the second-to-last ranked Power 5 team. Do you, can you tell who the last Power 5 team is? Is it an SEC team? No, it is not. Oh, I was about to go. It is so far from an SEC then team. I'm, then I'm really glad I didn't, I didn't say this team. Their fans would crush it is, me. It is miles away from an SEC okay, team. Okay, then I have no idea. Rutgers. Oh, I should have known that. I, knew <laughs> I that. thought you would because of your, oh, your yeah. disdain for them. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, no, that's but Kansas so. I don't even think of them as a Power 5 team. Les Miles, not a lot of recruiting you know, weight, nah. not a lot of recent history, not a lot of uh, – uh, returning production, like, the, no. Les is starting over. Yes. Which, by the way, did you read the article about him that Ross Dellinger did? No, I'm Where he's saying. he's gone vegan now? So okay, it, I, okay, well, kind of vegan. It's a kind of, yeah, he's a, what, what do they call it? It's a... a I know the gist of it. Flexitarian or a... He's, fle oh, flexitarian. Flexitarian. He said, he said, I eat vegan unless there's chicken. Yeah. And then I'll eat the chicken. Yeah. Unless there's, like, beef, and then I'll eat the beef. So... So you, you eat vegan if there's only vegan food around. Yeah. But if there's anything else around, you'll eat that yeah, too. He, he doesn't want to like, be rude. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So it, it was great. It's a yeah, great article. I don't want to be rude either. And so that's Sports Illustrated, saying. Ross Dillinger did a fantastic piece. It, I think he's having fun with this. I'll, you know and, how I feel about Les. Oh, I know. I hate that he's stuck at Kansas, but I hope he has a good time with it. Well, I think Don't take it too seriously. Don't worry about wins and If losses. it doesn't work at Kansas, AAF probably got you a job. I'd love be, that. He should be there anyway. Come to Memphis. If he came to Memphis, we might be talking like stalkerish. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I'm not denying that. No, I'm just I, saying. I can understand it. I can understand it. I wouldn't like hurt him. I wouldn't like hold him hostage. No, you just I mean, it would, it would all be in love. Of but, course, of but course. I would be around a lot. Uh, number eighty in this was Army. Man, they were like really good last year. They were year. eleven and two last year, but their yeah. their successful numbers, their uh, explosive plays, all that kind of stuff, like throughout the season. Anybody see the Houston great. game? It, well, exactly. <laughs> um, but they, I, I don't think they're returning production. They're okay. recruiting all that kind of stuff. Oh, it's, well, yeah. yeah, their recruiting numbers are going to be terrible. Yeah, um, I have recent no idea history what from five years or, back because they've been good for three years now. Good is a relative term. They've been better than they have been the last three years. I mean, last year they went 11-2. Last year they were good. The two years before last year, they were better than they have been. Yeah. I wouldn't have called them good. And then the two years before that, they were 3-8. and eight. They and were so, garbage. So, yeah. So, with Army being 
uh, 11 and two last year, and the recent history being five years ago until the year before last. Right. Like, I can I can kind of see it. Uh, They'll outperform that. I I believe that. They'll I do believe that. that. Uh, number 35 was Texas. Whoa. Who who was your number six best odds, or I guess lowest odds to win the national championship? Listen, all those Texas people sending me hate mail. You sent to Godfrey. Uh, they already did that. Not not Godfrey. Conley. This Conley. is Conley's. Name. Oh, listen. Okay. Um. All right. But My bad. but yeah. Don't say te- Godfrey. Texas then. people have been irate about this. Uh, that along with smile. along with UCF fans, and we'll get into that. We'll, we'll go thirty on back. How's that? Come on. Um. Number thirty. We got Virginia Tech. That didn't surprise me. It kind of surprised me because of how many people they lost to transfers and how bad the defense was last year. Oh, you year. thought but they'd be lower than this. I thought they'd be lower. Oh, yeah, that wouldn't shock me either. And their um, it, recruiting was not, you know, off the wall great this year. Like, it it, it seems like Virginia Tech was kind of trending in the wrong direction. That's right. But I Man, could, we want I could, Fuente to be so good, though, don't we? I, I could 100% see them bouncing back because last year they were so young on defense. I could I could see them being really good on that side of the ball this year. Still have a so. few flops here and there, but, you know. Uh, number 29, USC. Okay. Uh, I think Graham Harrell, the new offensive coordinator, is going to be really good. He came from North Texas. I like him, you know. Okay. okay. Uh, but I mean, Chip. Like, if if he don't win this year, like, is is done. Well, is this, kaput. This Clay, not Chip. Oh, sorry, Clay. Whoa, yeah. Chip's probably not in the top thirty. Chip, uh, no, didn't make the top thirty. No, no, not not even. I, I wouldn't have guessed it. Not even a sniff. Just just guessing. Uh, no, Clay. If he don't win this year, it it's it's trouble, big time trouble. Uh, number twenty eight is Florida State. I'm surprised they are in the top thirty. It did not surprise me because of the weighted four-year recruiting rankings. Okay. The recent history, which is five years ago until the year before last. All right. And returning offensive and defensive production. Yeah, but I'll tell you this. Florida State going to underperform this. Yes. I, I would no, guarantee no, that. No I mean, they, they lost DeAndre gonna, Francois. Going to bet against this. They got one scholarship quarterback. Yeah. One. Yeah. That is bad. insane. It's going to be bad. Number 27, Central Florida. Okay. Sound about right, you think? For the way this contraption works, yeah, that's what I would guess. Number 26 is Memphis. <laughs> now right. you're like, okay. The fact that those two are back-to-back does not surprise me at all. No. They virtually have had the same season except for the last two years, except for Central Florida has beaten Memphis. Yeah, I mean, Central but, Florida but 4 way, 0 against Memphis. But the way they recruit is pretty equal. The way they play out of conference has been close to equal. Yeah, returning offensive and Return, defensive yeah. production. I, I would venture to say they are, there's no doubt that they, they should be right next to one another. Yeah. Memphis uh, would I have. I wonder if like a if, big recruit pushed Memphis over the top. I would not doubt that. They, they I don't know who did. that could have been or would have been, but I wonder if. I don't, I, know. I don't know the answer to that. Who knows? But no, you know what? Who's probably going to hurt them? Returning offensive production, losing McKinnon. And McKenzie Milton? Yes. Yeah. And then McKenzie, that's it. And then Memphis bringing back almost everybody. Yeah. that's That's got to be what I don't know. I mean, Memphis, uh, Memphis lost uh, Daryl Henderson. So, I mean, that's a lot of yards. No, that's massive. So, I don't know. Like, I think Memphis has done a better recruiting job over the last five years. Um, Milton just has to be worth more. Well, I guess the the recent history, like five years ago, like, well, yeah, Central Florida was zero and twelve. How many years ago it was? Uh, That was four years ago. So within the five year window, that that probably makes sense. Um, Iowa at twenty five. Okay, I like that. That feels pretty good. You know how I feel about them. Yep, Boise State twenty four. That doesn't surprise me, but I don't think I think they'll underperform that. Um, I could see them being in the top twenty five. Maybe okay. like Fresno State, uh, who who was the Mountain West champs this year. No, like they okay. lose everybody right, this year. They'll be in the top twenty. Okay, you're right. And so uh, I Michigan, immediately equate: Will they be better than Iowa? Uh, you know who That's Boise what State? I did in my mind. You know who uh, who Boise State opens their season with? No, is it a big boy? It's a big boy. Who? Florida State. They're gonna win in that game. Jacksonville. They're gonna win that game. I I think they probably will. 
money in the early the, the opening, and we'll do a video on this, but the opening weekend, or really opening two weekends of yeah. college football this year, outstanding. It's good. That's, they really did a good job this year. I wish there were more home and homes. I mean, that we always Boise do. State Florida State game is going to be crap. Yeah, but it's it's going to be fun to watch Boise the uniforms. State. It's good. It's big for Boise State. Well, and it and it's not in Tallahassee. It's in Jacksonville, Doesn't which matter. is I mean, it's Tallahassee East, That's but fine. like whatever. Uh, Michigan State at twenty three. That's we haven't talked about this. That, that was the me. weirdest thing ever. What D'Antonio did. He took all the guys on the offensive staff and kept them all and just, like, reshuffled their position. Yeah, everybody's coaching somebody different. Like, look, I man, mean, I, I, I ride. I know you ride with D'Antoni. I, 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 I know. I you know. got to take the good with the bad. You got to take things you can't explain. I ride with D'Antoni. Here's another guy you ride with. 22, Oklahoma State. Oh, well, Mike like Gundy. Gundy. I do like Gundy. You you think they'll be back to? I mean, they they got to replace the quarterback. I, I want them to be better because the Big Twelve is just more fun when there's something to talk about other than Oklahoma just bulldozing everyone. Well, and and now that Texas is back, it's like Oklahoma Texas, and like Matt Rule at Baylor should be fun, and uh, the new guy from North Dakota State at Kansas State, like it, Kansas State. That's gonna take some time. That's gonna take time. That's gonna take time. Uh, Neil Brown at West Virginia, like I no, think he's okay, gonna be no, really good. I think he could be good quick. Um, but it, but they replace Will Greer, like they replace yeah. a whole lot on that's that team. Right. It's okay. Texas Tech, like the, the Matt co- Wells, I think is gonna do well there. But mm, eh. that's hard to say. It. I mean, it's define do well. It, I mean, six and six. I mean, I think I think he could. Shock some big boys, and I mean, it's seven and five is not out of the realm of possibility down there. But yeah, yeah five and seven is typically what they've been. So, yeah. but but they will be competitive, and they will play teams tough. Um, at off Oklahoma State, number twenty one, Tennessee. That's a lot higher than I would have guessed. Uh, I think Tennessee is going to be really good this year. You know how I feel about that. I want them to be. They they've got a lot of returning production. The SEC has not been the same since they're, they have they're been recruiting bad for a long time. Oh yeah, their recruiting has been really good. Uh, they got Jim Chaney from Georgia. Like, yeah, this is. I, I think Tennessee's going to have a pretty good season. Number twenty is Oregon. Uh, so, do we really believe in Oregon? Because their betting odds are are, are up there, and then the S and P's got them in the top twenty. I mean, um, I, so I I did more so. Are they when return, now they were turning. Uh, what's his name? Justin Herbert. He's not going to the draft. No, he is not going to the draft. So that's big. Um, but they they fired Jim Levitt, which was a strange move. But like people that are in the circles know, like the Cristobal and Levitt did not get along well because yeah. Levitt does not do a good job being an assistant coach. Like he was a head coach for so many years, it he is didn't tough. Take orders well. Yeah, he just wants to do his own thing, and Cristobal like has a vision for this program. So, uh, Oregon's got talent. I think part of it might have been like they had a top ten recruiting class this year, and Those maybe maybe young. because the Pac twelve is going to be a little down. Maybe it didn't surprise me. Um, so Oregon at twenty, number nineteen, Miami. Manny Diaz his first year. He's got Dan Enos, Alabama's quarterback coach at OC. Uh, they brought in Tate Martell. I believe Tate Martell is going to be ruled immediately eligible oh, yeah. because yeah. everybody else in the free world is. I mean, Miami could be good if Martell is good, but I mean, we'll see. We'll see. They okay. they lose some guys, but man, the chemistry on that team was weird last man, year. But you're talking about a first year, first time head coach. He's just gonna make mistakes. You know how I feel about that. Yeah. Number eighteen, South Carolina. No way. Yeah. Fighting eighteen. Champs. Uh, I mean, they bring back. Uh, uh, they bring back Jake Bentley. Debo's gone, but defense, uh, it was young last year. It's going to be more experienced this year. I would, I, I'm not going to be upset. I've been, I've been riding Muschamp for too long. I'll tell you this. I'm not picking him to now. win the East this year. Well, no, I probably won't do that. I, I, felt I don't like, hate. Now, listen, I might do that. <laughs> I might do that. <laughs> uh, number 17, Utah. Whoa. Now, that's a. That's a lot higher that's, than I was that's expecting. That's up there, uh, but I think I think Tyler Hundley comes back. I think uh, I think they're going to be pretty good. I mean, it, it, look, Kyle Whittingham always has a good team. 
He always finds a way to make them eight and four, nine and three, something like that. They won the division for the first time ever last year. They play year. tougher physical football than most Pac-12 teams do. And because they do that, and the Pac-12 beat, is so down, they can beat Pac-12 teams. Yeah. Yes, they can. Number sixteen is uh, Missouri. That's shocking to me. No, we'll we'll see what happens with the bowl ban and all that because I would imagine that'll probably be overturned. I take that back. I have no idea if that's going to be overturned. Under normal circumstances, no, because the analogy is you're asking your parents to unground you right after they grounded you. But because of the situation and because of how egregious this looked and whatnot, like I could see them taking the bull ban off and just like giving them a financial penalty, something like that. I, I could see a multitude of ways that this could possibly go. But Missouri at 16, they got Kelly Bryant from Clemson coming in at starting quarterback. So they've got an experienced guy back there. Are you shocked that Bryant went to Missouri? I was insanely shocked. I can't believe that happened. I I like, could like did somebody's daddy get a job? Uh, no, or uncle or something like that's weird to me. No, that he, he would leave Clemson for Missouri. Here's the reason he said he wanted to go there. Uh, he felt like he could be better prepared for the NFL under Derek Dooley and that bunch, which all those years, shocked me. All those years coaching for the Cowboys, I guess Derek Dooley got some NFL pool. I guess I I don't know that that makes very little sense to me, but. 15 was Washington. Okay, that's I'm, I'm that okay makes with that. perfect sense. Like anywhere from 10 to 20 for Washington would have I been. I think Chris Peterson's one of the top five or six best coaches and, and in they, all of college football. They lose some guys. That's right, but they're getting some guys. But I, mean, I, I think mean, Easton's good. I think uh, Easton's going to be real good. Easton's really good. His decision making at Georgia was a little. He was young. He was a true freshman. What do we know about his decision making? I guess you're he was right. 18. We, yeah, you're right. He's got. He was. Jesus. Does he have three years left? He should. He only played one. I thought he played. I think he was a true freshman, and then next year Fromm came in and took his job. Now he might he might have lost that second year because he played some and Fromm played some. No, he he only played the first game. He got hurt, and then he got hurt. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I'll I'll do some research on that. Uh, Penn State at fourteen. Got to replace that quarterback. I need to see what the offense looks like. Yep, got to replace that quarterback. 13, Texas A&M. Yeah, I was I was real chesty on them for a while, and then I saw their schedule. Yeah, schedule's, schedule's bad. I don't know that I'm going to let that scare me. Like, this this team could be 8-4 and four and be one of the, like, five best top, teams in the yeah, country. Yeah, no, they could be, like, a top two or three team in the country. And, and be 8-4. And, and, be, and be, yeah, 8-4, and 9-3. and three. Yeah. I mean, I they mean, could that's... finish 9-3 and three and legitimately be the – third best team in college football. Yeah. Number 12, Notre Dame. Ian Book comes that back. That surprise me. Uh, they, they got a lot of guys back. They they did lose some dudes on defense, but, they I mean, their coaching staff is back intact. Like They got embarrassed go. in one game, and that team then went on to embarrass Alabama. Yeah, it well, embarrassed that's, everybody for the that's, But that's what I'm saying. Season. Like, like, we all stood up and screamed, they should have never been allowed in this tournament. Yeah. And, and then we were like, well, so are we just not going to allow Alabama to be in the tournament because they just did the same thing they did Notre Dame? Yeah, Clem- Clemson last year was a, a different level. So that uh, we all collectively owe Notre Dame an apology, and I am not going to wash them off of what they did last year. Number 11, Wisconsin. They had better fix the fumbling problem. Well, fix the fumbling problem and, and just the overall feeling around the program last year was bad. Strange. You know, I love Wisconsin. They got out Wisconsin by, by BYU. Everybody. They they got destroyed by Minnesota. They I mean it was just it was bad all the way around. It was, it was hard. It was really hard. Yeah, it was one it was game I enjoyed watching. One, and that was the Miami Wisconsin bowl game. Yeah. That's it. Uh number ten, Mississippi State. I was curious how high they were gonna be because they lost a lot on defense. But they lost Nick Fitzgerald on offense, which yeah, I think would right. actually they be lost. like uh, addition by subtraction. It's addition by subtraction in our world, but in this computer algorithm that doesn't think like that, yeah, their offensive production is gone, and their defensive yeah. production is gone. Yeah. Uh, well, that's not, some of it. So, like their defensive line production is gone. Yeah. But linebackers and secondary, they are back. Uh, 
Uh, but they were young. I, they they you were young the, last did, year. Did you see the secondary? I know. I'm glad know. they're back. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, I would imagine you are. <laughs> you yeah, LSU fan, absolutely. They uh, they couldn't stop many people. Keaton Thompson, I think, is going to be much better at quarterback for them. I think Moorhead, second year in, the offense is going to look much better. You would hope. I'm going Otherwise, to, I'm like, I'm standing on this that if Neil Brown comes out swinging. It is justification for athletic directors to be fired. I can see that. I can see that. Number nine, Michigan. Okay. It's kind of low, I thought. It's where I they, think they're going to be. They did lose a lot of guys I, to the NFL. I was just about to say, I think they lost a lot. I trust them to still be good, but but based on this, and if it goes back five years, then, then they, they haven't been that great. So their last five-year trend wouldn't, wouldn't put them – much higher than this. Yeah. Wouldn't give them any reason to put them high at all. No, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, number, That's about where they are. No, number eight, Auburn. Okay, that didn't surprise me. Uh, recruiting really helped out Auburn a lot. Um, and, I mean, five years ago was... I think everywhere, every one of these numbers, they lost a quarterback. Yeah. That, which, I don't know how again, much offensive better, production that was, though. It, but not much for them last year. Gus runs the football. And and well, but he couldn't last year, and that's what's crazy. Well, I know that. But I, I think Gus calling plays this year, like I think you know. Now, obviously, this formula doesn't take any of that into uh, no, consideration. That's right. Number seven, Ohio State. Okay, I'm all right with that. Seem a little low. No, I mean uh, recruiting, returning and uh, returning offensive and defensive production, recent history. I felt like Ohio State would be up like way top four ish. I don't know. I felt like them in Michigan. I really do. I know that they blew Michigan out of the water. I think them in Michigan aren't a whole lot of different. Yeah, you might be right. And, and and Ohio State fans will hate that, but I don't. I mean, if I if I'm okay with Michigan being nine or ten, if I would have guessed, I would have probably guessed Ohio State six or seven. This is where it starts to get a little crazy. Okay. Number six is Florida. Man. Yeah. When we saw the odds earlier in Florida was so high, I thought, I think that's high. Is Mullins that good? Am I undervaluing Dan? I think he might be a little bit. I'm not trying to. I know he's a good coach, but this is different well, I think than we, a good coach. We have always, like. And doing something this we, big. We've thought about Florida a certain way since McElwain got there. But I think it, a lot of, okay, so the, the national championship odds, I think some of that had to do with them just – Boat racing Michigan. But also, Felipe Franks, like he turned Felipe Franks into a good quarterback in the second half of the season. Correct. So, does Florida have enough talent to be able to compete with like Georgia? I mean, that's really who they need to compete with, like LSU. That's right. Um, And so, I don't know. I mean, yeah, in in the SEC, they've got to beat Florida or Georgia and they've got to beat LSU. Yeah. And I mean, obviously, you got South Carolina and Kentucky got them last year, and Missouri got them last year. Well, but we like, think, if we think Tennessee's going to be better, this is why I just this shocks me. Yeah, it was a little weird. Uh, I think all of those other teams are getting better, and I don't know. That, I'm not saying Florida got worse, but I don't know that Florida got that much better. Number five was Oklahoma. Man, they're lower than I thought. But how much lower? are you putting on college? I mean, I'd have thought that'd have been up there, man. Last five year trend. Recruiting has to be strong for the last God knows how long. Yeah, but I mean Oklahoma's then, had like you can't say two top ten classes so, in the last four. They've like, lost offensive production because yeah, I mean they, they, they lost repl- their last two quarterbacks they, and they but they just replace it with another dude that wins the Heisman Trophy and competes for national. Yeah, final. I mean they they got I think uh, Rodney Anderson's coming back at running back next yeah, year. Like, I don't think they lose a lot else outside of Kyler, and I know Kyler's a big deal. When well, they got Jalen coming in. Yeah, but Baker was a big deal, and it didn't matter. No, you're right. You're right. I'm, I'm shocked. I actually thought they would be. When you said we're getting a little crazy, I thought maybe the stigma would be that Oklahoma would be five or six, and I thought they might be one or two or three. Number four is LSU. Holy shit. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. All right. That yeah, I mean they smile. they return the quarterback, they return uh, just they return basically everybody. The, the, the right? downside of returning everybody is that our offensive line is not good enough to beat, but to block the but they big but they got another front. year 
to get better, right? At some point in time, those other guys are just – they're getting better too, and they're already better. I mean, Alabama's entire defensive line basically was gone. So, like – Mississippi State's is too. I guess those are the two that I was scared of. Florida's? Yeah. What about them? They pushed us around pretty Florida good. got two guys that are leaving. So, okay, all right. I mean, Maybe you, you the see, guys that they couldn't block aren't going to be there. So Those are the three teams that pushed us around up front. Yeah. Like, just pushed us around. That state, it didn't matter. And then the other ones, it did. Number three, Clemson. Holy cow. Well, okay, Clemson's losing the farm on defense, I bet. And they lose a lot. Oh, on offense. offense. Oh, they're losing skill guys. And, and offensive line. Yeah, okay, that doesn't surprise me. Everything else Clemson's doing and, great. And if you look at their so recruiting still three. rankings. There's still three, by the way. If, yeah. But the only reason they're not one or two is because they they might have like 12 guys drafted in the first two days of the draft. Yeah. I mean, it's it, it's pretty nuts. I mean, really. Uh, Georgia at two. That's, yeah, okay. And then that, that makes sense one. in the Alabama yeah. number one. Yeah, that that's what I thought would so be the, one, two, The Clemson two, recruiting three. stuff also weighs them down a little bit because – they don't have the the top five classes. That's right. They all, yeah, I remember. Like that. they they, they always... bring in some five stars and then they just kind of fill out the rest. That's right. Man, that's that's a little nuts. Um, Florida okay. at six was super surprising. LSU at four a that, little surprising. That was real surprising. Like not just a little surprising, really surprising to me. Ohio State was lower than I thought. Uh, Michigan lower than I thought. Uh, although Michigan does lose a lot, Ohio State does lose some. Outside of um, Bosa, I thought LSU was losing the best defensive player in football. Wisconsin seemed kind of high at 11. No, that, I do think that's high. But if if we take last year and say last year is an anomaly, because you're looking at their five-year trend. Yeah. Their five-year trend says and that's part of it, but 11 but remember, is the wheelhouse. Wisconsin's recruiting, though, isn't like But it's never crazy. been good. It's never been good. But yeah. they're but they're returning production. They, I mean, they're bringing back everybody. Yeah. Other than they've the been able to do what they've done over the last five years. If you're only going to look back five yeah. years, they've been able to do that white clockwork with the exact same recruiting. No, I mean you're right. So you were absolutely right. Uh, that's going to wrap I, up. Our... I like I like this S and P. Um, well, yeah, because it it only looks at the analytics. Yeah, only looks at the numbers, right? So if you're just looking at numbers. It kind of gives you an idea of this is where this team should be, and then you can match that with the coaching because this doesn't take coaching into consideration. This just takes the the actual analytical numbers. I would like to try to find a way to do a game where we pick like five. Northwestern does something like this, but like five of these teams each. You can't pick the like I draft a team; they're off the board. You draft yeah. the other and who underperforms and overperforms compared to this when the season starts. Well, when we when we do projections. So like my number one pick would be like maybe Florida State. Who underperforms their I think their they're gonna, I think they're going to be X amount of positions down more than team would be up or down any. We could do that. And if there's like a team that's not on this list at all that you think will finish well, I mean, really that, high. So, so if all you think 130 UCF, teams are ranked. Yes, I know that. So, so if you think UCF will finish in the top five again, then they would be a number one pick because you, they're going to finish 40 spots higher than Well, projected. twenty. it'd be 22 if okay. they were to reach five. But, yeah. like, that would be – it would have to go by the S&P numbers when at the end of the season, yeah. which is all analytical. I'm fine with that. So, like, but I'm fine with that. Alabama at the end of last season – Yeah was still number one that, at the S&P no. because of how crazy all this stuff was. I'm, I'm fine but, with that. Yeah. I think, yeah, we could absolutely do that. So that's something that you and I do before the season every year anyway. We talk we, about who is going to be the uh, the team that comes out of nowhere. That's right. Who's going to overperform last season's. You want me uh, to let the cat out of the bag for the team that I thought was the worst ranked Power 5 team in the country? I would love for you to tell me that. And Are you going to say Arkansas? I was going to say Arkansas. Yeah. And I can't believe I totally forgot about Rutgers and Oregon State, which I know Oregon State's getting better. Well, now and you you got to think about Arkansas's recruiting. You'd I mean, already it, taken Kansas off the books, and I and I was trying to think of, like, the historically bad ones. I was like, oh, the ACC doesn't really have anybody that's been that bad that long. Okay. You know. And so I was just playing through it, and I was like, man, Arkansas's been bad. And, they're, and they seem to be getting worse. Like, I didn't think they'd get worse than they got last year. I think they might be worse. Well, they they bring in a new quarterback. 
Like I think year two of of Chad's system probably going to be a little bit better. Maybe. Schedule may not be as difficult. Of I should I say not, that. I mean, they. Were I losing should not their, have put them in the same fault or world or region as Rutgers. Uh, they that, they were not. That uh, was wrong. They were not lower than one hundred. I know that. I that think was, I think they were wrong. still in the top eighty. That's bad. So because while they were super bad last year, they do bring back a lot of production and whatnot. So like. <laughs> But is that a good thing that they bring that production back? I do not think so. Because I think it would be better if they turned all that production over. How long do you think they give Chad Morris? I don't know the if, answer If to he that. goes 2-10 and 10 again this I year, do this. they fire him? People who make fun of Brett Bielman, look, Brett Bielman's big ass just won a Super Bowl. Okay. Yeah, he got him ruined. They can all go eat it. You, th- you think maybe if he goes 2-10 and 10 again? Yeah. You think they they could oh, probably no, fire him? Absolutely, two and ten, four wins. Yeah, because there's the non-conference schedule in college football. Unless you're one of these big teams that plays another big team, is so soft. There is no reason for you to not win three or four games. I agree. Because I mean, last there, year they there lost are to. Four, there are four built-in wins by they bringing lost to high North Texas. Teams in. They yes. lost to Colorado State. Yes, like you, you can't do that. You can't be losing those games. You can't be in the SEC and do that. Vanderbilt wins those games. Chad Morris, this ain't SMU player. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I want Arkansas to be better. Wait, I think all of us do. I, d- I really do want my conference. Oh, not just my conference. I, like I said, I want Oklahoma State to be better. And teach, I, I like college football when teams are good. But when it's not nearly as chalky as when it was got, this When past you've got season. six or seven great teams and everybody else – there's 50 feet of crap between the great teams and the next team. It's just not fun. It's not fun. I, I really hope it's different this coming year. I really hope it's different. All right, that's going to wrap up uh, the show, I believe. That's it. Yep, that's it. Uh, forever. As always, Tunica Travel. Not forever. Until next week. Uh, TunicaTravel.com. Go figure out which sports book you like the best. Down in Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. Follow us. Go over to winningcureseverything.com. We got everything there Facebook, Twitter, podcasts, YouTube, et cetera. Hit that subscribe button. Leave your comments below. We'll see you guys again next week. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.